High school students and parents sometimes say principals and teachers don't quite understand what it's like to be a student these days. It turns out there's an effort to change that. Some 1,300 principals recently took a day off from their usual role and instead followed one of their students for a day. The approach came from two groups outside the traditional field of public education, the de design school at Stanford University at Stanford University and IDEO, a design company based in Palo Alto, California. Special correspondent John Talanko of Education Week followed one principal through the first ever National Shadow a Student Day Challenge. It's part of our weekly education series on making the grade. My name is Karen Ritter. I'm an assistant principal at East Leiden High School, which is just outside of Chicago. And today, I will be shadowing a student Why are you doing this? Just to get a sense of what students go through during the day. Hey, Laura. I don't really get to spend a lot of time with students. Usually I'm in charge of things that the teachers are involved in. So this includes teacher evaluation, teacher attendance, uh, professional development. Is there a way at this? Is I would say 50% um, is in meetings. Do you feel like you know what goes on here? do, you know, just because I do observe a lot of classrooms. Now, I'm looking at it more from, you know, the teacher's perspective. But now, I want to know what it feels like through the lens of a student. Her public high school serves some 1,700 students and is both racially and economically diverse. Today, Karen is following a ninth grader. Wait for me, Alan. Alan Garcia. I first met him because he came to my office and said he wanted to talk about his schedule for next year. He's in a lot of remedial classes and he wanted to be changed out of those classes. So I really want to know what makes him feel that way. <laughs> she hopes to find out, not just by observing Alan's classes, but by fully participating in his entire day, which started at 7.35 with a boost of physical education. This is the class that I was most nervous about, because I don't run. <laughs> Her stamina would be put to the test by what comes next. Seven more 50-minute periods, starting with Learning Center for one-on-one -on -one help. Right, yeah, because like, you have to explain. Followed by Alan's usual two-hour double math class. Then, barely pausing for a bite. Thank you. Before jumping into the second half of the day. Four back-to-back -back classes. Literacy, computers, English, and freshman seminar until the 3 p.m. dismissal bell marks the finish line. What's it like having Miss Ritter follow you around? We're going the wrong way, aren't we? Having the assistant principal follow you everywhere, it's, um, you know, it feels weird. <laughs> and for Karen, we checked in with her about halfway through the day. Um, I'm holding up. <laughs> Um, I, I definitely feel like my energy level has gone down since this morning. Great. You know, I had to write an essay in literacy and I felt like I had a hard time concentrating and, and trying to focus. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of sitting and a lot of thinking, so. You can't work with your buddies while you go through this one? Like algebra, algebra block, so it's a double period. That was hard, because <laughs> especially it's over, um, a couple different lunch periods. So every time the bell rang, I, I wanted to get up and, and leave, but it's like, oh no, we have another period to go. We have more time to go. Double period math is one of the remedial classes Alan wants to change. It's really boring. And it gets me exhausted at times. You know, just like sitting down for two hours. Gets me mad and sometimes puts me down because I'm like I could be like learning like new stuff instead I'm like stuck with like something I've been doing for like seven, six, eighth grade. So what do you want to be doing? I would like to be taking um, you know, French, like woods, metals, all those like types of classes. Because Alan is in the classes that he is, he doesn't have the opportunity for a lot of those electives. He, you know, was placed in certain classes because of his test scores. 
but I don't know if he necessarily needs to be in that level. What did you get? I got why is... He was getting things and teaching them to me. Yeah, you got it. Alan helped me. Really? <laughs> yes. Uh, I think nice. Alan represents someone who is, is very representative of our school. Middle of the road kid who, when challenged, can reach high, very high expectations. And I think, you know, maybe keeping him at a certain level might uh, hinder his opportunity to do that. So I would like to see more opportunities given to students and, and maybe we need to rethink the way that we place students. Not based on test scores. How else had her views changed? To find out, we asked Karen to grade East Leiden High School on some key measures, both before and after her shadow day. Keep in mind her view was limited to just Alan's classes. We began with this statement. In this school, students learn actively, creating, questioning, discovering. Your grade yesterday was a B. Mm -hmm. Today? Um, I would say a C minus. Her scores also went down for student engagement, from B to C plus. You said the blue and relevance. And the purple. How often teachers drew a clear connection between students' work like, yeah, and the outside right. world. That dropped from a C to a D. So we're looking for creativity. But her take on school climate and the expectations both remained high. Yeah, we have some work to do. We have some things that we can fix, but it's a great place. I think um, we provide a safe environment for kids. We have plenty of resources for them. I think I will do some more shadow experiences with an ELL student, with a special ed student, with an AP level student, because I think they do have different experiences here. That was fun. Do we have to do it again? The point is to, to know what the students are thinking and, and wanting and, and start with them. In Franklin Park, Illinois, I'm John Tulenko of Education Week, reporting for the PBS NewsHour.